Hello everyone. In this video we're going to go over activity 8.1. This is a one-way ANOVA where we have a design with three different groups and we're looking at sleep deprivation and social media use. And specifically what we want to know is does the amount of sleep people get um, affect how much time they spend on social media? And so we end up in this study with three groups of people. People who've slept for six hours, seven hours, or eight hours. And this was an experiment, so people were randomly assigned to um, get that amount of sleep. Then we record um, the amount of time they spent um, using social media during the week when they only got six, seven, or eight hours of sleep a night um, each night. Okay. So we're doing a one-way ANOVA. And to do this, in Jamovi, you click on the ANOVA menu, and then you can click on One Way ANOVA or ANOVA um, to do an ANOVA. I'm going to click on ANOVA here. And then my dependent variable is how much time people spend on social media. And then sleep group is our independent variable, which is a factor. It's a fixed factor. And you move that over into the fixed factors box. Okay. So as soon as you do this, you get an ANOVA summary table. And I'm going to add to my ANOVA summary table measures of effect size for the overall ANOVA. I'm adding in the partial eta squared and the omega squared. Okay, so in terms of our output here, we have an F of 5.847, right? and that is the ratio of the mean square between groups, and the mean square between groups is the independent variable, sleep group, divided by the mean square residual or we also refer to this as mean square error or mean square within. And that gives you an F ratio. And then our P value there is 0 0.003. The probability that I would get an F of 5.847 or higher, assuming the null um, hypothesis is true, is 0 0.0035. My effect size, I have eta squared and omega squared. Um, actually, this is partial eta squared or omega squared. Uh, we prefer to use omega squared uh, just because it's less biased um, than eta squared. Eta squared tends to overestimate the effect size in the population. Okay, so overall, we know that this overall ANOVA tells us that there's some difference amongst these three groups. So let's go ahead and take a look here at our uh, means that we're going to be comparing. I'm going to click on the estimated marginal means. And I'm going to ask for a marginal means table, um, and I need to move sleep group into the marginal means box, and it'll give me a means table there. Okay, so I have a graph there of my marginal means, and I have um, the, the table as well. And you can see that on average, people in the six-hour group spent 287.29 minutes per week on social media. People in the seven hour a night sleep group spent 257.36, and then in the eight hour sleep, it was 243.60 minutes. Right. So what our overall ANOVA tells us is that all three of these means are not equal to each other. At least one of them is different from the others, or maybe they're all different from each other. We don't know until we've done post hoc tests. Right. So to do post hoc tests, you're gonna click on the post hoc test menu, move sleep group over into this box. For correction, select no correction. Unclick two keys, select no correction. And then you're gonna get an effect size and you can get confidence interval around that effect size as well. Okay. So I now have my post hoc test listed up here in the post hoc test box. So the way this is set up is that this first row is comparing the six hour group to the seven hour group. The difference between the means for those two groups is 29.92 minutes. And if I look back here at this table down here, we can see that when we compare the six hour to the seven hour group, the six hour people spent more time on social media than the seven hour group, right? Subtracting six minus seven, right? Six minus seven there. The standard error for that difference um, is listed there. Um, and then we also have a T, a T for that mean difference, which is 2.29, and then a P value for that difference as well. Right? So the probability 
um, of getting a mean difference of 29.92 or higher, assuming the null hypothesis is true as 0.02, which these data are not consistent with the null hypothesis. This suggests that there's a real difference between these two groups that's unlikely to be due to sampling error. The size of the effect is 0.42, which is a medium-ish effect. And a 95% confidence interval is that I'm 95% sure that the true effect size in the population is somewhere between 0.06 and 0.78, which is admittedly a large range of values. If you want a, a more precise estimate of the confidence interval, you need a larger sample size there. Okay. So we can see there that for that first post hoc test, group six uh, spent more minutes on social media that week than the um, group seven. Okay. Our next row is comparing group six to group eight. Okay. So if you look down here at our marginal means table, group six spent more time on social media than the eight hour group. Okay. We're looking now at our post hoc test to see if that difference is a real difference or likely to be a real difference or likely to be due to sampling error. So the mean difference we're looking at is 43.68. The T is 3.34 with a P of 0 0.001. Okay. So we're, this, these data are also not consistent with the null hypothesis. In other words, this appears to be a real difference that we're observing between these two groups. And that is that group six spent more time in social media than group eight. Our final post hoc test, our final pairwise comparison, is comparing group 7 to group 8. Okay. Now, group 7, on average, um, spent 257.36 minutes on social media, whereas group 8 spent 243.6 minutes on social media. Now, we do a post hoc test to compare those, and we can see that the T is 1.05 with a P of 0.29 which means that that difference we're observing is these data are consistent with the null. The distance, the difference is probably due to sampling error. Okay? And that is a small effect size, right? The 95% confidence interval ranges between negative 0.17 and 0.54. Right? So that difference is small and likely to be due to sampling error, right? whereas our other differences are um, not likely to be due to sampling error. So that's really all the data you need in order to analyze and interpret your um, one-way ANOVA. Okay. So I hope that helps. Good luck.